In the last video, I showed you how to take the fake periodic table of the elements and make it into the real periodic table of the elements. Now, for this one, I'm not going to do that. Because if I take this and I, and I take this, because this is all supposed to be one graph. It represents the atomic number versus the atomic mass number or something. And so, so, so I'm not going to take this thing and then just like, zzz, and then take this piece and put it on top of it and take this piece and put it on top of that one, because that would require that some, that, well, that everybody, that would require that everybody like for hydrogen, get all the way down here and look at it down here. And then if you're looking for like uranium and above, you'd be standing on this thing and half people, half the people, half the people who are just regular normal size wouldn't even be able to access this stuff. So I'm going to leave this one as it is just for ease of access. And as you'll notice, this is not set up for my height. This is set up for the average height person. So, or below average. So in this case, you are, ooh, it's falling off the wall. You are advantaged by being normal height or shorter with this one. Anyway, this thing is pretty cool because contrary to the periodic table of the elements, which you kind of imagine that all of the carbon and all of the hydrogen and all of those things, they're all exactly the same because you have just numbers for the carbon and the hydrogen and the oxygen. Well, chemistry, chemistry is all about the electrons. It's all about the electrons. You deal with the protons a little bit just to determine the number of electrons in a, in a, what, a neutral atom, right? Well, that's not what this thing's about. This is a chart of the nuclides. This is all of the isotopes. And you spend about three minutes in your chemistry class dealing with the concept of isotopes. But this is all of the ones that we've made and that we can find in our crust. And they're all, it's, <laughs> things pretty cool. So, an isotope. Isotope, first of all, same number of protons. So it is a particular element because the element is determined by the number of protons in that nucleus. And this is all about the nucleus, the, the marble in the stadium. The, the marble in the, the big, gigantic baseball, professional football stadium. That's that tiny little thing in the middle found by Rutherford in the gold foil scattering experiments because some of those alpha particles fired in there, almost all of them went straight through, but some of them bounced back. Crazy stuff because there's this high density nucleus that's a very small part of the atom. So the marble in the stadium, that's what we're talking about. Not the electrons on the outside. We don't care a single bit about the electrons on the outside for this chart and for nuclear radiation. We don't care about that stuff. We're only dealing with the nucleus. And that tiny little nucleus is made of protons and neutrons. Okay, there are all kinds of other particles and forces and, and virtual exchange particles holding the whole thing together and the nuclear strong force and all that, all that stuff, that's there too. But this, this is the structure and the decay types of all of these nuclei that we've made in the, in, in, in the lab and that are naturally occurring. All the grays, see those grays? There aren't a whole lot of them. Those are the naturally occurring ones. And all the different colors, those are the ones that have particular, well, all right, we'll get to the colors and stuff in a bit. But this is all of the different nuclei, certain number of protons, like carbon has six protons, right? Well, carbon could have six neutrons also, a six and six balance, but it could have six protons and, and, and seven neutrons or eight neutrons or nine neutrons, but it still has six protons because that makes it carbon. And it could have six protons and, and five neutrons or four neutrons, maybe three neutrons. And most of those that we can make in the lab, because we can create nuclei in the lab by bombardment. You smack, smack a nucleus with some other particle and it can make something else. Most of those nuclei are highly radioactive and stick around for maybe a couple of millionths of a second. And that's all here. All the ones we've made and measured, it's all right here in this chart. This thing is pretty sweet. Let's take a look at some of the details. All the isotopes and all their decays and all the really cool stuff about the periodic table here in the chart of the nuclides. Let's learn physics. This is the chart of the nuclides and isotopes. And look at that. That's a pretty crappy picture of an atom because although the nucleus exists and looks kind of like that, scale is totally wrong and the electrons are not actually orbiting like little planets. That picture that you see constantly of the atom, it's not correct and we know it. First, let's take a look at hydrogen. Atomic number one, you think, oh, just one proton, right? Nah, it's not that simple. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven total isotopes of hydrogen that we can either create in the lab or are naturally occurring. Now the grays that you see, gray represents naturally occurring, gray, 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 gray represents naturally occurring isotopes. And this isotope has one proton and that's it. This one, this is one proton and one neutron. That's an H2. So one proton, still hydrogen, because it only has one proton, but two neutrons. This is H3. This is one proton and two neutrons. One proton, three neutrons. One proton, four neutrons. One proton, five no neutrons. One proton, six neutrons. Now these, these were all created exclusively in the laboratory. Exclusively, not naturally occurring. This one too, is also not naturally occurring in our crust or in our atmosphere. But these two, 99.9885% of the naturally occurring hydrogen that we can find is protium, just the simplest one. Then 0.0115% if I can read of the naturally occurring hydrogen is deuterium. And then none of it's this. So protium, deuterium, tritium. This stuff is really useful for hydrogen fusion here, and they're all used in hydrogen fusion into helium in the sun. So, this thing, naturally occurring and non-radioactive. Naturally occurring and, well, apparently not radioactive, but this stuff right here, hydrogen-3, tritium, has a half-life, and that's what that first number is. And yes, that A stands for years. Uh, Latin, anno, anno domini, the year of our Lord, the AD, that's, what the, that's years. And this is a beta negative decay. It kicks out a, an electron from the nucleus. Crazy, right? From the nucleus. This is all nuclear stuff and, and gives you some energies and some other information and some other information down here. This is actually, there's a ton of information here. Most important is the, for us, is the half-life time and the type of decay. And there are sometimes several types of decay that you can see. Here's the key, all the information necessary for this particular chart. This is the chart square information. There's the symbol, there's the atomic mass, the element name, thermal, neutron, absorption, cross-section, and barns. Yeah, couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, right? It's pretty funny. Stable is gray. Artificially radioactive and naturally occurring or otherwise available, but radioactive also. So you have a bunch of elements which are naturally occurring and radioactive. Naturally radioactive decay chain, two isomeric states, one is stable, so you can have this thing decay into something else, but not just le energy leaves. Energy leaves the nucleus, but nothing else changes. Two isomeric states, both are radioactive. It, it's, it, it can be pretty complicated. Then you have the symbol for radiate, radiation and decay, all the different symbols for the possible types of decay. The list is much larger than we would normally believe, lead you to believe. Time, and as you can see, A is years. Other symbols are necessary. And then the color legend, all these different colors that are up there, all what they mean. And then displacement. So this shows displacement caused by different bombardment reactions and relative locations of products. So if you have a particular process that's happening, it tells you where it goes in the chart from one place to another. Now let's take a look at another one of these things that is potassium that makes you radioactive. Here's potassium, it is atomic number 19. You got potassium 35 and 36 and 37 and 38 and 39. Ooh, look at that. That's a stable one. And here's another stable one. And both, all three of these grays are the ones that we find in our bodies. That's what you get when you eat bananas, right? And then this one, this one has a half-life of one point. Okay, we'll look at these details later. But 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, all the way out to number 54. These are ones that we've made in the laboratory. And we can create them when we have measured them. Now let's take a look at the potassia. <laughs> is that the plural of potassium? I don't know. Here's your potassium-39. That is stable. That exists in your body. It's naturally occurring. Here's a potassium-41. That's stable. That exists in your body. It is naturally occurring. Here's another one. Potassium-40. That's uh, it's one and a quarter years. It lasts on at Well, not on average. A half-life is one and a quarter years, and it decays by beta decay. So one of those neutrons, it's kind of like one of the neutrons becomes a proton and an electron, kicks out an electron. That is a radioactive element 
radioactive isotope that exists in our bodies. And here we have number 92, uranium. 217, 218, 219, but apparently we can't make 220 or 221. And then it goes all the way up to 237, and it keeps on going to 242, but you can't make 241, apparently. And so now let's focus in on the gray ones that exist in the crust. The 234, 235, 239 exist in our crust. 235 is what you want for nuclear fission, and the 238 can be made into plutonium-239 for a breeder reactor. But see that uh, percent naturally occurring, 99.3% naturally occurring, 238? 235 is, uh, well, 0.7% naturally. That's not good. So we have to, that, that's the reason for the enrichment necessity for uranium and the reason why nuclear weapons and nuclear technology of any kind is inaccessible to most countries. So get a paper one or go online and check out this chart of the nuclides. Fascinating stuff. Thanks for watching Learn Physics. And thanks for that thumbs up, too. Really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.